So firstly, true partnership. Um, for me, we actually be- we are firmly believe in the accountant and bookkeeper community. We don't want to compete with it. You're the magic around the technology where it happens. And so we were founded that way and we still operate that way in the markets where we have dominance. And so and it's core to our strategy here. This episode of the Cloud Accounting Podcast was recorded in person at ZeroCon in New Orleans in August of 2022. To learn more about ZeroCon, visit ZeroCon.com. That's X-E-R-O-C-O-N.com. And now, on to the episode. Hello, and welcome to a special episode of the Cloud Accounting Podcast. We are in New Orleans. Hey, David. Hey, we're at ZeroCon in New Orleans, and we brought our favorite, favorite ZeroCon person, or Zero person, Ben, you are now, this is the third appearance on the Cloud Accounting Podcast for you. This is Ben Richmond. He's the country manager for, manager for the U.S., so people should recognize his voice by now. It's three or four episodes I think he's been on. Three? Yeah, it's a, it's a few numbers. It would be about three. Hopefully my accent's getting slower and easier to understand as we do, but always love, love having a chat. I think we could talk for hours. So Yeah, welcome Thanks back. for having me. Ben so, Richmond. It was, what, a thousand plus days I heard since the last zero con. It was. And then it's almost over a year since we had you on because I think we chatted at the accounting salon. In New Orleans. In New Orleans. And that yep. was just at the tail end of COVID there before Omicron, I think, searched I, up. I forget. <laughs> I just, it's very great. Yeah, well, <laughs> all the great two years. <laughs> yeah, that was the first time I think we'd gone out on site with Zero to a conference in the accounting salon at New Orleans. And uh, what a way to get back into it, straight into New Orleans. <laughs> Again. <laughs> so what else has been going on for you then during this this two years of no zero cons. Yeah, no zero cons. Well, still lots. I mean, we we did the lots of good virtual stuff. We tried to make that different. I think everyone had a good shot at that, but we're all over that now. So it's good to be back in person. Family wise, uh, well, I've, I'm a dad now, so uh, congratulations. congratulations. So thank you. And yeah, this is the first uh, first actual work uh, session since I've had the baby. So I've, I'm actually getting more sleep in New Orleans than at home at the moment, which is not something you usually say. So yeah, it's been a big, big few years work-wise, personal-wise. Um, as you've probably seen today, like working really hard on the, the foundations of the product. We've talked about bank feeds. We've talked about the, the extension of sales tax, the acquisition of Locate with inventory. So just lots of good US product coming, um, supporting our partners through that time. Man, I can't say how much we appreciate accountants and bookkeepers and what they've done for small business through the, the crazy three years, the never ending tax seasons, uh, and all the fun of trying to get hold of the IRS on the phone and, and things like that. So it's been pretty crazy for everyone. I think we've all got through and it's so cool to see everyone just having fun together out there. I mean, my takeaway so far, and I, I told us to Blake earlier before we were plugging all the wires in here, is I feel like as an observer, I came obviously from the green world, yep, right? Yep. I'm like, wow, Zero's making it very clear that the Americas is a priority. Absolutely. Yeah. Northern Hemisphere, big priority. Um, you know, we, we've always had bold glo- global ambitions. You've seen us grow in the Southern Hemisphere. You've seen our growth in the UK, but, you know, North America is our big focus um, and it's an exciting market. It's still still early. Um, so, and we know we've come a long way and we know we've got lots more to do as well. So that, that we wanted to make sure that was super clear. And you're doing that through like building, partnering and acquiring. I think you said on, on the stage, can you kind of give examples of those three that you've done? that are specific to North America? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the first one was obviously HubDoc. We did that um, well before the pand- pandemic, which is a really good acquisition for North America, given how good the HubDoc product was and, and known in North America. And the last two major acquisitions have been North American focused. And there's, you know, that sort of, there's no accident that that shows our priority here. So both tax cycle, which is really helping us sort of think about revolutionizing those write up workflows to India tax up in Canada. Um, and then Locate, um, the awesome Locate product and Locate team um, that we acquired out of California. And, and we talked about today how we're going to be taking Locate, taking that awesome code and those awesome people who have a passion for inventory and building that into Zero, so that Zero has good inventory for good space businesses. Then we want to really start to you know be super competitive in the e-commerce space. And, and the really interesting thing with Locate is it's a really advanced product. So over time, we can take more of the other features from Locate in, uh, which gives us the opportunity to think about solving those, for me, the, those more those businesses with more complex needs um, that often have to go on to the big solutions when they could probably, you know, not make that jump. So sort of the other phases of Locate I see is get good inventory into zero for good space businesses, really win in e-commerce, and then building out the, the products that works for those more complex needs inventory businesses. So I'm, I'm super pumped and we've got more to go. So we're still, you know, we're out there looking um, in all the different places of how we expand the platform um, for what our customers need. 
What's the timeline look like on that? Like, when are we going to have the inventory? Blake's secretly asking. He's, there's probably a feature he's been wanting yeah. in Zero for years that's <laughs> still not here. Maybe he's secretly asking. That. Yeah, you definitely need to talk, chat to Cookie, our VP of product, and see if you can, uh, and for the US, to see if you can get signed up on the on the beta. So the team are working really hard to get it uh, into Zero. Like, we wanted to, I think we've learned a lot in the acquisition space. And so, you know, riding the cloud clean into zero, making sure that it scales really well. Um, so that's the first focus and, and, and sort of what we, I would call it like a locate light um, sort of for the, the smaller end of town. Um, and I think, I'm not quite sure, we, we're, we're looking to, the, we're opening interest for the beta. And I think hopefully sometime either later this year or early next year to have that going into the product. The further stages we go fast into e-commerce and then obviously the, the more advanced features will come over the next sort of couple of years it is a big piece of work so we'd be we're really careful not to overcommit because it's a uh, uh, you know building it properly into zero is, is a big task so but you know the locate team that you, i think you know annie terry and that they're they're great passionate folk that know the space know the u.s market really well so um i've got every confidence they're going as fast as they can so so that's acquisitions i think you also announced like the team you're building in the states. Now you have engineers in the states. You got park managers in the states. Can you want to talk about the team you're building? Even marketing, I guess. Like yeah, yeah. And so it's um, I think big things. So a couple of the big ones first out. I think there's there's been a couple of real votes of action for us. So Chris O'Neill, who's our new chief growth officer, um, who's you know based in San Francisco, got a pretty tenured background in the SaaS space um, with companies like Google and Evernote. Um, Jug, who's uh, out in San Francisco as well, who's our EVP of engineering. So between those two roles, pretty much most, I think every engineer in the company now reports through to North American leadership. So we're starting to see that migration of leadership to where we want to win the most important market um, at the scale of the North American market. We're building out product teams here. We've obviously established the Toronto hub as well. So lots of different functions starting to, to grow here, which as you know, being close to the product, having people that really understand the customer challenge and problem that we're trying to solve just helps us go so much faster. And at the same time, we're still leveraging. I mean, I think one of the benefits of being a global company is there are a lot of things that are the same around the world. And so we're still leveraging experiences from other markets where it makes sense, but making sure we've got really good local horsepower and knowledge to solve the, you know, there are many, many unique U.S. challenges to solve, and so having people that have got experience in solving those here in the market is, is a big focus. So you mentioned uh, inventory is a big focus. What else is the focus uh, on in terms of product for the U.S. market? Yeah, great question. So you would have seen the partnership with Avalara. So we really want to put good, comprehensive sales tax into zero, so that you can calculate and report on sales tax within zero. So that you've, I know, we spoke about this in the last time we're on the show. We, there's a lot of innovation in Zero's global platform that if the basics um, for particular segments of the market, you know, verticals don't work, then they can't get access to that. So we're really focused in the US on you know, getting those basics right, making sure high quality bank data is coming into zero, making sure that, that we can go after goods-based businesses and, and serve them well with the good sales tax. The boring compliance stuff, which you know people call it boring, but us accountants will always say it's actually it's the exciting stuff that actually makes life go faster and get, get you to the cool stuff. Things like improving our 1099 experience and all the things you heard Anna and Cookie talk about. So lots of core product needs, but also we're looking at things like, you know, you've seen this year with Analytics Plus, we're starting to think about what are those insights we can deliver? How do we do more with the ecosystem as well? So how do we use the ecosystem and markets where we want to grow and, and go together with a lot of our key partners? So keeping that really open partnership approach uh, that we've had. And the other one is XSBI. Um, we've now got enough scale in the US. And it's kind of funny because if you think about small business insights, they're generally small sample sizes that government or state government departments do by the time you get the insights published it's usually the survey takes 12 months and then 18 months later we're talking about this is the insights we learned which is kind of useless and so we're at a scale now which is exciting in the US and Canada we can start to aggregate the data anonymously and surface up key insights so insights that we can use to help champion better small business policy with government insights that we can use to give to our advisors to help them you know advise and coach small business and so we're excited to launch that today as well and you were that you've previously done that in other regions yeah because i think we've talked about these numbers during the pandemic on the podcast before i think we covered some of these numbers so now you basically every quarter you're going to do kind of the same thing in the u.s yeah i think it's fast so new zealand is an interesting one right so we have such scale in new zealand and we've had uh, xsbi running down there for a while 
to the point that as you know, as the government's making those calls early in the pandemic around, do we lock down again? Do we need to lock down the city? And then, and then what is the impact on the small business economy? We were actually able to surface that information and start to show them that you know when we lock down aggressively for two or three weeks, here's the here's what it does to top line revenue in those in that customer group in that area, and here's and and also surface up things where you know there's a segment of customers here where their revenues down, but they're holding their net profit flat. So what are the common things we're seeing there? And I remember some of the early research when we launched it down there, things like more active use of an advisor. Um, so the common c- traits that you could see between the ones that were able to hold their net profit flat when those sort of top line decreases happened, use of an advisor and more use of technology. So if they had more apps connected. So um, yeah, it's super exciting. So really early days as we launch it here in the US, but it's so cool to be able to bring that to the US market because generally small business insights are a real black hole or the information's too late. So you, we talked about how a lot of the, or more of the de- development is coming to the U.S., more resources, the leadership uh, in terms of like product here in the U.S., but a lot of it, and, and especially in the last, you know, during the pandemic is in New Zealand, right? Like co- uh, your core development team. And I know um, New Zealand was locked down for quite some time, probably one of the strictest in the world. Is that why... From my perspective, sitting here, we didn't have much in the way of feature development for several years, it, it felt like. I mean, like, did that really hurt zero? Yeah, I, I don't think the lockdowns did. So we were, as a company born in the cloud, and we've always set up the ability to work remote, you know, our teams were able to really quickly adapt uh, when New Zealand locked down. Our, our product teams have always been distributed around the world. You know, we have development in the UK. We have quite a lot of our development in Melbourne, Australia, across the cities in New Zealand. Uh, it was a couple of years ago, sort of pre the pandemic, we'd already established the Toronto hub. So if I was to talk about you know, what was the reason for the delay, probably a couple of things that we've been pretty open about. One is, um, you know, the platform's now 16 years old and we've been scaling really quickly and, you know, is at our last results over 3.3 million subscribers. And so we've been doing a lot of work to modernize the platform, um, which often users don't see you know, the impact straight away. So how do you, you know, re-engineer, re-modernize the platform so you can continue to innovate at the scale that we are now? So there's been a lot of work going on uh, in that space. The other thing too is the US is just hard. Um, and half the, you know, I'm impatient and want half the features overnight as well. Um, but as we know, you know, things like sales tax and, and things like bank feeds um, have been incredibly complicated. The one I'm really proud of though, and, and it's an area where we've done a lot of the modernization work and we've seen the sort of mojo of Zero's really consistent releases is Zero's reporting. So we've had it really we've had that focused on the US for a couple of years now. And so you've probably seen a lot more regular releases coming out in the US for US specific reporting. And you know, a great example of we launched the new this new report. There was a couple of things that US partners didn't like about it. They were able to get that feedback in and we were able to roll a, a, a fix within a week based on that customer feedback. So that's an example I think we've done really well. Our reporting is holding up really well in the US. Particularly as we know, the US does a lot of things differently. Accrual versus cash is obviously a big one. So users being able to select, I want cash by default, but I can also switch accrual. So that, that's an area we have gone fast. So pandemic didn't, gave us challenges like every other company did, whether it was the great reshuffle as opposed to the resignation. But yeah, we've always had distributed product teams, but we're starting, I think what you're seeing a shift to is specific products for specific, that are specific to the region. We want to make sure we're, we're building more of, the, more of those in region so that we can go faster. Makes sense. So I know you have to go. Yeah. And you have to wrap up, but you're on the main stage and Amanda Aguilar asked you what you would tell somebody that's never seen zero or touched zero in account or bookkeeper. And she said, you get one minute to answer it. And you went on for like eight minutes. So I'm going to give you a second chance. I pulled up my stopwatch. So I'm going to ask you this question and we'll hit start on the stopwatch. Why zero? Yeah, absolutely. So you got the stopwatch going. So firstly, true partnership. Um, for me, we actually, be- we uh, firmly believe in the account and bookkeeper community. We don't want to compete with it. You're the magic around the technology where it happens. And so we were founded that way and we still operate that way in the markets where we have dominance. And so, and it's core to our strategy here. Two, DNA, small business is what we love. You know, I come from a small business background. I've seen the trust we have in advisors. And when I was an accountant myself, you know, I, I saw the clients trust in us that we just didn't capitalize on as well as we could that coupled with a small business family so zero is the platform that i do believe will bring all of those people that sit around the team that support a small business and help them get confident to grow uh and three it's i think it's a partner community like actually and you can see that the fun the co-opetition that happens in the zero partner community versus competition there's so many partners in our space that are new old but they're all willing to share 
Did I get it? You did it. 54 seconds. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> I might have had to go into that fast talking New Zealand accent for that though. Thanks so much for joining us, Ben. Thank I, I you, love Ben. Because like, you've been the consistent zero voice for our podcast listeners. And if folks want to connect with you online. Yeah. Uh, at Ben Richman one is the Twitter handle. Um, tried to get someone else got it before me, the, the original. Um, or just email me, ben.richmond at zero.com, obviously with an X. Great to chat with you, Ben. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks man.